Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Murat Gassiev, Otto Valin, 30th September in Turkey. So it's going to be for the WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight title. A little bit late to the news on this one. I've been uh, pretty busy, so uh, apologies. Uh, not many videos up recently on the channel. Pretty burnt out, if I'm honest. So uh, I've just come off a few hours sleep. So I wanted to talk about this uh, fight because it's not very often that we get you know legitimate heavyweight contenders who've got a lot to risk and a lot to lose actually fighting each other effectively. You know, not even for a guarantee at a title shot. This really is, um, for the loser, it's going to be a long way back to build position. At the moment, we've had such the heavyweight logjam with at the top end of the division, the title holders fighting so infrequently. Tyson Fury will not defend his belt in 2023. Alexander Usyk, obviously, he's just fought. A uh, whole bundle of other guys, you know, waiting, watching, waiting for dominoes to fall. But these guys have pulled the trigger. And this is a fight that um, um, Salita uh, Promotions, uh, Dimitri Salita, who promotes Otto Valin, has said that these are two of the most avoided heavyweight fighters. And I think to an extent that's true, but some of it too is, uh, let's face it, in the case of uh, Otto Valin, you know, for some of the bigger names, what's he bringing to the table? You know, he is often seen as, you know, high risk, low reward. Um, and, you know, is he really going to be shifting pay-per-views? Because let's face it, it's the entertainment business. That sort of stuff matters. Mirat Gassiev, who recently has taken on, um, what is that, Armenian citizenship. This fight here, having been in Turkey, uh, scheduled for Turkey, he is the A-side here in this equation, at least in terms of, you know, the fight being made. So, and Gassiev and Valin both have been very inactive. Murat Gassiev has fought sparingly due to injury since 2018 when he lost to Alexander Usyk. Otto Valin has fought sparingly since losing to Tyson Fury in 2019. Both these guys are a little bit of a question mark because, you know, where's the form really at? We haven't got a really good form guide on these two. And if I was to look at just, you know, these two different guys, Valin being the bigger guy, but um, Gassiev being the puncher, and Oloh Valin in some fights having looked pretty pedestrian lately and also we've seen him fade in a few too. You know, I'm just leaning towards Gassiev. And I know some people will say, look, Otto Valin with his skills, he will be able to, you know, use the ring, utilize movement and basically keep Gassiev at range. And they'll people will cite, look, the World Boxing Super Series, Alexander Usyk was able to do a number on Murat Gassiev and make him look pretty basic. And I guess to some extent, Gassiev with his power punching style, come forward, you know, remember those years with Abel Sanchez as well. You know, he is pretty straight up and down, no special effects, but he's got dynamite in those hands. And in respect of Otto Valin and a comparison with Alexander Usyk, as uh, Frank Warren would say, you know, do me a favor. Otto Valin is effectively the wish version of Alexander Usyk. He is not a patch on Usyk and his talent. So to me, I mean, I think what we're going to see is probably a tale. If this is a 10 rounder, actually, it's probably going to be a 12 rounder with a WBA strap on the line. Probably four or five rounds where Otto Valin, with his length, the southpaw, with decent skills, good fundamentals, you know, using his length, using the ring. But I think the constant pressure of Murat Gassiev is going to be a problem. We've seen in some of the fights where he has been fighting, you know, when guys have tried to stay out of the way, you know, eventually he's going to catch up with them. And it's probably worthwhile just actually going to their box wreck. Uh, so Murat Gassiev, a record of 30 and 1. Six foot three, maybe that's a little bit on the generous side in terms of the height. He is rated the 15th best heavyweight on box wreck. Maybe based off the activity, is that a little bit high? I mean, some of it will be carrying over from the cruiserweight days. But like I say, since uh, 2018, just really not much to home, uh, to to write home about. Nura Safiri in 2020, you know, he'd actually prior to that had signed on a promotional contract to, with Matchroom to fight on DAZN, never eventuated. 
fought Mikhail Wallish in 2021. Wallish, after basically, you know, he'd done his normal give it a go for a couple of rounds, fell down. Carolus Welsh, and then more recently, which I think we were expecting more from Mike Belligan, but effectively he, you know, it's, it looked like he didn't want to be in there. He was unbeaten heading over there, and um, he just didn't put the performance. So we didn't really get to sort of see a good barometer of where Murat Gassiev is really at. Just so injury plagued recently, not much to, you know, really sort of go off. But so too for Otto Varlin, current record of 25 and 1, the one loss coming to Tyson Fury back in 2019, where he was, I don't want to say plucked out of obscurity, but I think, you know, uh, outside of heavyweight fans who'd seen the Adrian Granat fight and some of his earlier fights, you know, he wasn't really known and he put in a better effort than some people expected. And that kind of has galvanized the way that people see Otto Varlin. But more recently, you know, apart from the Dominic Brazil fight, which was arguably the best win of his career, but he did fade in the stretch down that one. It's been really pedestrian stuff. I mean, he looked poor in the fight against Camille Sokolowski. And I don't know how many of you saw the Halloween Olguin fight, but it wasn't good. I mean, Old Green was really out of shape. He had an injury too. And, you know, he was actually connecting quite a bit on Otto Varlin, who was just going through the motions. And I'm pretty sure we're probably going to get some of the commentary around, well, he needs a challenge. He needs, you know, a sort of opponent in front of him who's going to test him to bring the best out of him. And I hope so, because, you know, if not, perhaps, you know, Otto Valin with the style, remember the way that he fights and, you know, there's other guys like Alexander Usyk and other boxers and movers, you know, it is a young man's style. Otto Valin's not a 25 year old fresh heavyweight anymore. It's got a few miles on the clock and that style is going to age like milk at some point. And especially you start dropping off just a little bit. If some of the best years of his prime have gone because of inactivity, it's going to be a real shame because clearly he's a good fighter, a good heavyweight. But, you know, with both of these guys, inactivity and gaseous case injury, it's a little hard to know what to expect. But I'm just sort of the way that I see the fight playing out of my head is Valin starting strong early on, being able to help manage the distance, you know, using footwork, using the ring. Probably, you know, we'll see the smallest ring in history in Turkey on the 30th of September. And it's creeping around quickly too. Only a, announced a week or so ago. So at three weeks notice, clearly these guys probably knew something was in the works and have been training towards it. But I think Valin probably starts to pick up a few of those early rounds off the back of the jab. Safety first. Probably not a lot happening. Not a lot landing. Gassiev trying to dial in, get closer, press forward, exert pressure. And I think he will just be looking to to land anything. And I think eventually he's going to start to catch Valine a little bit more. Maybe early on, some of it's going to be, you know, the odd body shot, you know, the odd shot to the arms and that. But with his power and that pressure that he's going to bring, he's going to eventually, I think, catch up with Otto Valine. And I think this one won't go the distance. I think he will stop Otto Valine late on. And Valine's got a good chin, but I think. We're, you know, I'm just expecting he's going to have some success and put it on Valin, who has, in some of these fights, even in that fight against Halloween Olguin, looked a little pedestrian down the stretch against Dominic Brazil, tired. I think, you know, there is also a sense that he's been living off that performance against Tyson Fury, where he cut him, made Fury sort of change the way that he fought that fight, and all of a sudden he's became a name off the back of that, and really how much has he delivered since? Not much, because he hasn't been fighting enough to really prove it. He's a good heavyweight, but where do you really place him right now? I know some people, especially as promoters, say that he's one of the top dogs in, in a top 10 heavyweight. I can't place him in the top 10. I mean, of based on what? On what? But Gassiev too. I mean, it's all just a question mark. Both these guys with the inactivity, injury in Gassiev's case. But because there's a lot on the line for both, and the winner, I think, could stake a claim to be deserving of a heavyweight title fight. But because of, you know, the four belts being across two fighters and, you know, mandatories, you know, piling up and others, you know, arguably also deserving title shots, you know, this all, all could be just for a paycheck effectively in the end. 
I mean, the WBA has just had its mandatory fight, so perhaps the winner of this goes, you know, towards the top of the rankings. But they're at the back of the queue in terms of the three belt mandatory sort of rotation for Usyk's belts at this point, if in fact it started to go towards that direction. But I like the fight. I think there is scope for this to maybe go the distance, but I'm sort of picking a Gassiev win, and I think he is going to catch up with a tiring and fading Valine late. I think Gassiev is really going to be, you know, mentally exerting himself, you know, letting those hands go, coming forward, maybe struggling a little bit in the early rounds, but sli- slowly dialing in, having success, and eventually getting his man. How do you see this going? Or do you think that Otto Valin has got enough uh, gas in the tank to be able to stave off a, you know, an aggressive Murat Gassiev? Do you think he is going to be able to um, rack up enough rounds and uh, make the distance get the win? Because let's face it, he's not going to knock Gassiev out. I mean, he's got, you know, he couldn't knock the skin off a rice pudding. So it's either going one of two ways as I see it. Gassiev by KO or Valin by a close points decision. But given... Um, you, Gassiev will be the home fighter you may get the decision even if he doesn't deserve it what do you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared I'm out